May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, on Labor Day weekend, if you are online today, wherever today this morning finds you, we're glad to connect with you there. And for those who are here, this ending of summer, the gateway to fall, uh, whatever that means for you individually with new schedules or schools, but there's always a lot of transition. And uh, I think we need God more than ever in our lives, so we come to worship um, however you show up today to uh, hear what God is up to in the world, in the Bible, and then also to receive God's grace that comes in a very simple meal where all we are required to do is to receive and somehow in that uh, faith is created and nurtured and sustained. Uh, we are in the Gospel of Matthew, and I wish I could tell you uh, this story is going to make you feel really good today, uh, but Jesus is really direct about what it means uh, to follow him, and that means to follow him until death. So um, we trust, as we always do, that God will speak and land on our hearts as a community and for each of us, uh, and we continue to do that. So as we begin today, uh, we name the truth about this world. Um, it's not perfect. It's far from perfect. And each of us in our own way diminishes what God is about. And um, even with our best intent, and God still says, I see you, I created you, I love you. Uh, we'll try this again. So uh, with that sense of uh, posture of confession to receive this gift of mercy that continues to come. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin now in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings and hoarded your bounty. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak and have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, Forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst and offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and we sing together.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. We pray together, creating God. This life of faith is winding and unsettled, and yet your promise of presence still holds true. Remind us once again that resurrection comes after death. May we live in the expectation of what is now and yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. The Gospel reading for today comes from the 16th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 21st verse. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. 
Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Word of God, word of life. You may be seated. You will find squiggles on every page of the Spark Bible. Now, let me introduce you to squiggles. A little chameleon, or maybe he's a lizard, who has found his way into every illustration in this children's Bible. What a cool way for kids and adults to interact with the Bible as a reminder that we are part of these stories, too. I always notice, though, during Holy Week, that Squiggles is nowhere to be found on the cross when Jesus dies. Here in this illustration, the cross stands alone with this background of night. Nothing is left but the cross. I went back to what we have been about this summer, and we have heard stories of Jesus' teaching and ministry, of healing and feeding and gathering and calling, Jesus just recently walking on water with the disciples as they move now to the other side of the lake, interacting with people who are new. And now Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem, always interacting with crowds and individuals and teaching as he goes. In fact, just last week, Disciple Peter affirmed Jesus as the one, the weighted Messiah, and Jesus appointed Peter as the rock to lead the church, to follow Jesus, and to build the church. And then in the next breath, taking the next step, Jesus tells Peter and those around what God's chosen one will do suffer and die and rise again. And confident I am ready to lead Peter, now cowers seemingly paralyzed, when Jesus says, the one, the anointed one, called by God to rule and save, will actually die. So here we are ready to embark on the fall, not talking about growth or the next thing, but landing on the page of the Spark Bible with nothing left but the cross. And so every time we hear this story, I think, how are we supposed to do this? What does it mean to take up our cross and follow Jesus? Clearly, the cross is even the center point of our worship space. What does this cross mean? Death, yes. Suffering, yes. And it is also a sign of what the empires of power of this world will do to those who don't follow the expected way. Pontius Pilate was ready to let Jesus go, but it was the crowd 
raw human power coerced to believe that what someone has done is just worth eliminating them. The death on the cross so public and humiliating, the death so slow and painful. No one is left at the cross because no one expects a savior to suffer and die. And although we won't find squiggles or any of uh, the rest of us there, we will always find God. And this cross is the center of our Christian faith. If there's anything that a church should do, it is to proclaim that God suffers and dies. And it is from that place of death where God promises to create new life. Jesus says early on in the Gospel of Matthew, the blessedness of God is not for us when we are privileged and life is going well. Actually, we are blessed when we mourn, when we're poor in spirit, meek, when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, when we are pure in heart, the peacemakers, when we are persecuted for the, for the sake of righteousness, and when we are reviled and persecuted and uttered all kinds of evil against us falsely on the account of Jesus. So what are we to do? Whenever I lose something, my dad's voice comes back in my head, Beth, where is the last place you had what you were looking for? And so my mind would go back to when I last saw my tap shoes or my notebook, or my keys, or my wallet, or whatever I had misplaced that day. In our Lutheran faith, we believe God is always found when the word is spoken at the font at baptism and in Holy Communion. Even when we don't feel like anything has changed, in these places, we receive God's living spirit. God's promise is spoken again and made true. There is nothing that can separate us from God. And God is accomplishing more than we can imagine. We are forgiven, fed, and renewed, even in our doubts, questions, and disappointments. So if there's anything to do when we feel disconnected, it is to come back. Come back to worship, to hear the word, to receive the bread and wine, and to be reminded of the promise God made to you when you were baptized. And when you come, just like today, you don't come alone. Someone else showed up too because they need this reminder as well. As a church, we are not a social club, a place that requires a membership card, but we are called to be community. We are not called to be the same. We are called by God to find a place and to connect with other people who are finding a place. And our commonality is of faith to believe that God is still up to something in this world, and we get to do it together. We collect our gifts and our treasures, our hopes and our prayers to create a place to worship in community and to offer a way to show up in the world, to proclaim the cross and to proclaim that from that place of death, resurrection will be found. Jesus does not leave us in this life alone, but gives us the spirit to gather community and to be a force of mercy and love in the world. And this force, which is us and so many others, is far from perfect, but it is there in the imperfect, just as we are that God shows up.
to forgive, to feed, and empower us to follow Jesus once again and to act in the world to share that message in very human ways. The Apostle Paul says, For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And so that is what we do. We come as we are. We dwell in these stories that speak of human and divine. I can't believe anyone who says a life of faith is easy or glorious. It's hard, and it's hard to figure out. But today, by simply showing up and opening our hands to receive what God gives us, then we live, then we take the next step. I met with Mark and Roy and Greg and Scott and Jim, people among us who tend to the cemetery and chapel. And we figured out that combined they hold 140 years of caring for the place where Mount Olivet's story began. We walk through the cemetery reading the names and the dates of fellow members of Mount Olivet. Most I have never met, but some I have known and dearly miss. Fifty years from now, others will walk the cemetery and they may read our names, not knowing the specifics of our stories, but mindful of the call that we had like them to be a church centered on the cross. Trying in our world of human things to trust in the divine things. The two are always enmeshed, and that is the wonder and the promise that God chooses human things to reveal the div divine. We don't have to do it. We get to do this. So come as you are today. With all your questions, your doubts, your disappointments, things yet to be figured out. And we come as a community called by the Spirit to follow the one who promises to be with us, even to the cross, to forgive, to feed, and call us to follow day by day inch by inch. Amen. Please stand and we sing together. Let's go.
now confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive peace from each other. For those online, we will greet you in the comments with peace. be seated. We now continue with the offering uh, for all the ways uh, that we do this work of um, offering um, these treasures in our lives, money and presence and giftedness uh, for the call to proclaim God's love through Jesus, to proclaim that cross is the place in which new life comes. So thank you for that. There's a Venmo code in the bulletin basket up front here in a box in the back as well. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fails me never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine.
pray over our offerings. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that all may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me god continues to call and gathers us as we pray now the prayer that jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place uh, for all of us today. This meal was instituted the night before the cross. And Jesus knew there needed to be a ritual, a way of bringing us back because we forget. And so eat and drink to remember 
what God is about, that through death and suffering comes new life in whatever way that takes to take up our cross and follow, to come back to this promise that is for real and for true. God says it so. And all we are asked today is simply to receive this grace and that wonderful way that God uses humanness to infuse divine in the world and trust that it is true. We do it together. For those online, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For us here at church, wafer is gluten-free, wine is dark in color, wine is lighter around the edges. You're welcome to pray where you are or feel free to come up front as well and use the kneelers. Please come forward now, this meal is ready.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And so now we pray, and here at Mount Olivet we pray together, uh, the specificity of the people and the places and the events where we're calling God to show up. And to be able to share that communally is just a reminder of what it means to be church that we have to do this life together, we can't do it alone, and we each have something to offer. And um, when we are struggling, most especially when that cross is heavy on our hearts and we cannot see or imagine what resurrection looks like, uh, someone is walking there alongside of us. And so you do have something to offer today, your presence, your prayers, and, uh, just this companionship in this life of faith. So I'll start us off and then just simply raise your hand if you're at church. Um, for those online, it's so good to read your names as I see you pop up. And if you have a prayer today, please write that in the comments and I'll read that in just a moment. So let's pray. Uh, God, we just come back uh, to who you are in the world, especially when we can't figure it out. Um, we can't rise again. Uh, that is the work of you in our lives. And so here's the promise uh, that you will stay with us as we make our way, that each and every day we're given an opportunity to begin again, to be forgiven. And God, make a difference in the world. We get to be the ones to bear your love and mercy through very human ways. And you have called us as a church. It happened over 140 years ago. And we have a future ahead. And you are with us as we figure that out day by day. So thank you for bringing us back to worship to receive the power of your living spirit in our lives. That we are specifically called to be your church right here. And so for a community and a world that is waiting to interact with us, God, show us the way. And now hear our prayers. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Nancy. So a classmate from high school, Nancy Gregg, who died after falling from a ladder, uh, the fragileness of life, uh, doing very regular things. Um, and that's when we need to come back to the cross, to this promise that death is not the end. God goes that far, that love and God are stronger than death. And so uh, for life, for Greg, even in death, and for his family and community, uh, Nancy, as you speak, who grieve, um, God, be present. Show us the way. God, in your mercy. Wally. Okay, so your brother David diagnosed with prostate cancer, finding the next step with treatment. Um, we pray for healing, God, for David. Wally, for your family as well, as you companion him in this uncertain time. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Priscilla. Yeah, yeah. Priscilla, uh, praying for teachers and students. Can I add parents? Um, 
um, as we go back to school for safety and wholeness, for learning, for community, uh, to hold on during transitions, um, to be community in this part. And we're in just a, a week or so welcoming back our, our Wednesday community and the life force um, of what it is uh, to nurture faith. Um, and so, yes, uh, for all those new beginnings and transitions, and God, we pray that everybody has a friend at lunch. God, in your mercy. Um, a prayer of uh, deep joy, and that is that Beth McGrew King, our director of engagement, and her husband, Jason, just adopted Malachi on Thursday. Beth and Jason have been fostering uh, little ones uh, for many years. And Malachi's story is now a part of their story. And um, I will announce in a minute, they're going to walk in. Can we just give them some love? Hello. Yay. I, um, we met Malachi, you guys picked him up from the hospital, he was just days old, and now he's 17 months old, and um, what a gift and a joy to have known him since he came into your lives, and now known him, know him throughout his life. Hi, Malachi, um, and we will uh, celebrate you in a moment. I'll give you an announcement. Beth and Jason are hosting a little reception after church, uh, so we can hug and love them up, and... Um, just welcome Malachi into our community here at Mount Olivet. So happy for you, Beth and Jason and Malachi. God in your mercy. Okay, friends online, I'm coming to you now. Okay, JoLynn, we've been thinking about you so much uh, with thanks for the gift of coming home, but also asking for prayers um, for incisional healing, improved strength, um, and healing. JoLynn had back surgery and is back home. JoLynn, we have been praying for you and thinking about you so much for your ongoing recovery and healing. And JoLynn, for you um, to speak what you need in these days of recovery. We pray for healing, God, in your mercy. And God, for all the things that we have spoken today and prayed for for today, for that love to continue to come. Amen. So a few things. Yes, next Sunday um, is the 10th already, um, and we, uh, same schedule, 9 o'clock, and um, have time between services and are kicking off a theme for the year until the story is told. And that will debut uh, with a special art gallery that's being created in the community room this week that has over 20 stories with photographs and poetry or a story written by Mount Olivet members to tell some of these quieter stories of impact and what God has been doing and is doing at Mount Olivet. So when you view that gallery, you may think that's great, uh, but you also have a story to tell and you have a story to share. And that's what we will be doing over the course of this year is really celebrating the impact, how we share this message of the cross and new life with the world. We do it individually, but we also do it as a community. So we're really excited about next week and look forward to seeing you back then. And then, as I mentioned, um, a little hosted coffee and donuts for Beth and Jason and Malachi. Thank you, McGrew King family, for making that today. They're just gathering here in the Welcome Center uh, you may not know this, um, but we host another church, a Congolese church, the Universal Assembly, and they just meet on Sunday afternoons in the conference room, and they are having a bigger invitation for community and are using the fireside. So you may have noticed over the last couple weeks it's set up a little different um, so they can worship here. Um, after we do. So um, if you're interested in more private conversation, the conference room is open for coffee there, um, but you don't want to miss Beth and Jason and Malachi on the way. So with that, I invite you to stand and we close together and we sing.
the God who calls out across the universe and yet speaks within the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, be held in love. Thanks be to God.